Hello everyone, this spectator millionaire for Ridiculous Things in Shul number two is dedicated to the memory of Lucy Meyer and Rina D. In honor of Monday and Rosh Chodesh, allow me to share the following. I was in a shul a few months ago, Monday, and someone got the third aliyah, gets up there and says, I'm going to lean. The Gabbai quietly and very dignified said to him, listen, in this shul, we have a custom that the laner lanes for everyone. This old La Torah insisted, no, I am going to lane. Now I'm going to add, this was an Ashkenazic shul, not a Sephardi or Temani shul. The Gabbai relented, allowed him to lane. What happened was, since people heard the commotion, they all took out their chumishes and sitters and corrected him on everything he said. He just says, va, of Vayomer, they already corrected him. I think this was a ridiculous story for two reasons. The Ola La Torah's behavior and the Gabbai. The Ola La Torah went against the Halacha. The Rosh, Paskin by the Rama, says that nowadays we have a professional laner. The reason is, not to embarrass someone that doesn't know. Imagine a situation where we have seven aliyahs on Shabbos, three people know how to lane and can lane their aliyahs, and the other four didn't. They'll feel bad, they'll feel like ignoramuses, They'll never agree to get an aliyah again, maybe even leave the shul. In order to prevent that from happening, we have a professional laner for everyone. Those that know how to lane and those that don't. The Rosh says it's learned out from Mikra Bikurim. In Mikra Bikurim, when you used to bring your first fruits of the seven special fruits of Israel to the temple, they used to have to say Mikra Bikurim on your own, namely the Psukim in Parshat Kitavo from Arami Ovedavi, etc., it wasn't written down. It couldn't have been written down at the time for halachic reasons. And therefore, whoever knew it by heart could read it. Whoever didn't got embarrassed. So what did they do? They first stopped bringing first fruits. Chachamim and the rabbis at the time saw it and said, no. From now on, the Kohen will read it on behalf of everyone. Same thing in Shul, says the Rosh. The laner will lane on behalf of everyone. The greatest rabbi with the phenomenal memory in the room and the biggest ignoramus in the room. For someone to insist, no, I am going to lane myself, goes against the halacha, and not only that, tries to make you more important than everyone before you. And therefore, I think it's ridiculous. There's no reason for it. It goes against the halacha, and it shouldn't have been done. But equally ridiculous is what the Gabbai did. This is obviously not a member of the shul. He doesn't know the practice there. And he insisted on something. You don't relent for a guest. Either the guest conforms to the minhagim of the shul, or you can very quietly sit down. You don't relent for a guest. There's a way to change things in a shul. There's committees, there's votes and whatnot. You don't relent at the bima to change a practice. Those practices were there for a reason. So as equally ridiculous it is to try to lane yourself, it's almost equally ridiculous to allow someone to lane themselves because more damage was done than good. Bezrat Hashem, we should have beautiful Kriya Satora. There should be a professional laner there who knows how to lane, will only correct them when warranted, and indeed everyone will feel equal, everyone will feel welcome, and most importantly, we will never live a yesh at Misha Ino Yodea. Have a wonderful day.